Traders, today we are talking about Connor's RSI. Now, let me just first make sure I explain what you see on the chart in front of you so you have a good base for understanding what's going on here. First of all, we're looking at a chart of Apple, APL, and that's the candlesticks here. Now, below this chart of Apple are two indicators. I've got CRSI here, and I've got RSI down here. Now, RSI stands for Relative Strength Index. So Connor's RSI is another tool for using the Relative Strength Index, but really expanding on it. So RSI at the base level is a very popular tool. You've probably heard about it. If you're watching this video, you know it. And Connor's RSI now is building on that tool. So oftentimes you'll see that these tools get expanded on or they get bigger or better. Well, that's happening in this case with Connor's RSI compared to just regular RSI, but they still have two different purposes. So RSI, as you know, it's in our help center. We've got tons of information there. In fact, if we go to indicators, metrics, and strategies, relative strength index, let's open up our help center. We can actually watch this full in-depth video about RSI and also read about it in great detail as well. And remember, with RSI, it's very important, the RS, average gain of N days up, divided by average loss of N days down. So it's a momentum indicator. You are looking, essentially, at how fast or sort of how strong this symbol is moving up compared to its down days, or how strong or you guys you could use fast depending on the word you want to use it's going down compared to its update so a rather straightforward indicator once you start to understand it inputs style visibility all the settings are here like you're used to in training view but now that takes us to connor rsi so i'm going to delete rsi so we can just focus on connor's rsi now connor's rsi is a rather dense tool. What I mean by that is that it is actually utilizing three things. It's utilizing RSI, which I just explained. It's in our help center. You can watch our video. Average days up versus average days down. Here's your RSI length. But it's also doing this up-down length, or think of it like a streak of sorts. Essentially, it's counting how many days in a row this symbol has gone up or down. So it's, you know, consecutive days up, consecutive days down. And then it's got ROC length, which is another way, essentially, for you to look at the sort of a rate of change of the symbol over one day and then compare that rate of change to, in this case, ROC length of 100, the last 100 days. So that's a lot of data into one indicator. You've got your RSI, your up, down, and your rate of change. That's three things into one indicator. Now, that's also why it looks fundamentally different than your relative strength index as well, because it's not just a relative strength index. It's a relative strength index with the up, down length and the street of the 100 you know, the, the look back of 100 bars to see how this current bar compares to the last 100. So it's got three inputs here to work with. It is, it is dense, just have to put it that way. So it's naturally going to look different as well. But what's really great about that also is you've got all of that information fit into this oscillator or into this visual. So I'm going to delete RSI again and just remind you that there are some similarities as well to RSI. You can see here by default, we've got a dotted line here at the top. We've got a dotted line here in the middle and a dotted line here down at the bottom. Well, it's the same thing. You've got 70, 50, and 30. So 30 is the extreme by default when going down. 70 is the extreme by default when going up. And your middle line sort of is 50. So you could look at as any, anything in the middle here. 50 means there's nothing too um, extraordinary going on. It's sort of average or it's going according to pace. Anything up here at the top means that these three inputs are firing off in an upward direction. So that's quite a bit of information all firing off at the same time. 
The opposite is true down here at the 30 level. That means all three are trending downward. But remember, it's also possible that one, say RSI, in a very extreme way, could drag down the other two, even with them potentially going slightly up or going sideways. Just an important note there to remember. Now, as always, when you go to your indicators and strategies menu and you say type in Connor's RSI, I haven't shown this yet, so I just type in Connor's RSI. It's right here in the search box. As always, you can hover your mouse over the tooltip and click, and you can read all about it. And because of this video, you will very soon have a wonderful video right here that you can watch as well. So just reminding you, here's your calculation. You've got your RSI, your up-down length, and your ROC, or your rate of change. And recall that there are these three things happening. Well, here's the exact calculation for those three things happening. CRSI means Connor's RSI. These numbers here are the inputs in the settings menu. And then you have the actual equation here. RSI times three plus RSI, the up-down length, two plus ROC, 100, and then divided by three. Now you divide it by three because you essentially are normalizing or dividing the one, two, three different inputs. So as you scroll down here, you'll even get some examples as well. But why don't we work through some examples right now? So I've got Connor's RSI selected. I'm looking at this chart of Apple and I'm on a daily chart. Now, of course, it's depending on what time frame you're on, you naturally will see the indicator change according with that time frame. So if you are a long-term trader and you go to a week, well, the Connor's RSI is going to follow that uh, time interval change. But if you wish, as always, you can do multiple time frame analysis and you have full control over the time frame of the chart that you're looking at. So here's what I mean by that as we dive into this example. So I'm on a daily chart of Connor's RSI. Now let's say that I am a long-term trader, but I wanna stay on this daily chart and actually use Connor's RSI and the three inputs that go into it on a longer term time interval to make a decision about this daily chart, thus multiple time frame analysis. I'm gonna turn this into a weekly Connors RSI while looking at a daily chart. That's two time frames at once. So I'm gonna click the settings menu here for Connors RSI. Calculation time frame says chart. Now by default, if you have it set to chart, that means that whenever you change the time interval on the chart, Connors RSI will change as well. But look at all of these other intervals that you have, including tick data. Well, I'm going to click one week and click OK and look at Connor's RSI. It's adjusted to a week. Now, what's really great about that for an indicator like this, as mentioned, it's ingesting a lot of data, is that it's smoothed out a little bit here. As you can see, it's a little easier to read. The spikes, the peaks, and the bottoms are a little bit more spread out. And that's because, as mentioned, sort of the theme of this video, there's a lot of data going on here. And by extending out to a week, we can just smooth the data out a bit. So now, as you can see here, we have this daily chart. And while we might normally just rely on an RSI, we can now use the three inputs into the Connors RSI, including regular RSI, to decide if we think that Apple has actually bottomed here and is maybe starting a trend, perhaps a bullish trend upward. Now, what's so interesting about this is that we can see that the previous high was made here on the Connors RSI on what looks like Friday, May 16th. And on Friday, May 16th, it was at $213 per share. So we've got two pieces of information here to work with right away. Meaning if we do think that this is sort of the start of another uptrend, we already can see where maybe it might top out at if we just follow the Connors RSI price history. In fact, the last three times Connors RSI got up to about 75, 76, it peaked and that almost marked the exact turning points on three different occasions. So let's just match this up. We can see this point here, and that matches up pretty much perfectly with this top here. 
It also hit above 75 here. And actually, Apple did climb higher, but it did eventually retrace. So it was, in a way, the right move. And recall, this is a weekly. We've changed this Connor's RSI to a weekly calculation. So on that long-term time interval, it was still fairly accurate in this example. Now, if we keep going, we'll just circle this again here. And we can see the latest high, latest high here as well. Now, what is rather interesting is we are also seeing lower highs on the price chart. And we also now have a reference for our Connors RSI. Meaning if we did think this was a interesting point to trade, well, we probably want to be aware of this level on Connors RSI, considering these last three occurrences. And not only that, but this peak also corresponds with these highs here at 212. So maybe there's something to be said about setting an alert for a rather quick take profit target if it gets there. So that's just an example of using Connor's RSI. Now let's spend a little time going through the settings menu to ensure you fully utilize this tool to your advantage. RSI length by default sent to three, time frame one week. So arguably three weeks there. Up down length two. ROC length 100, you have the complete control to change these inputs as needed. The best way to really get a good feel for this is to experiment with the calculations that matter most to you. And one way to also think about this is that Connor's RSI is not just an RSI, but it's also got the up-down length and the ROC length. So you almost have your trend here in RSI. Then you sort of have your you could call it your uh, uh, thermometer almost in the up-down length. How hot is it? How many consecutive days is it going up? And then in a way, you have your barometer. You're measuring it. You're keeping track of it in terms of what does the daily change look like now relative to the last 100 days. But of course, you can change this, or in this case, weeks. So make sure you get familiar with these inputs and expanding them as needed. Now, always remember, you've got wait for time frame to close. Well, this is on a week. I'm recording this video on a Tuesday. So that means this time frame is not closed yet. So if I check this box off, you can see how the chart changes. That means it's calculating now rather than just sort of waiting for that weekly time, time interval to end. It could be for any of these time intervals, by the way. Now, if we go to style, well, this gives us the ability, as usual, to customize the look and feel of this indicator as needed. So Connor's RSI, white line here. We've got a line, histogram. All of these options are available to us. You have full control on how you want this specific indicator to look. Recall the upper band. You can see the dotted line here. It's going to disappear when I uncheck it. Once again, you can customize this color to your need. Maybe if you think the upper band is bearish, you have it red. Now you have that visual cue at 70. And by the way, maybe you think the Connors RSI should have a higher upper band. You can change that to 80. Middle band as well. Same thing. Let's just keep that gray for now at 50. Lower band, let's expand that as well. And let's say that's sort of the oversold condition. Maybe it's time for a mean reversion. Let's do green. So we've got the visual cues here. Background color is exactly what it sounds like. It is the background color that fits between the upper band and lower band right here on your indicator. Now, naturally, you can also master visibility as needed, which is the time interval where the indicator will show up. This is true for all indicators on TradingView. And that is going to wrap up this video because now you have a full understanding of Connor's RSI. And most importantly, you have the base understanding of Connor's RSI so that you can use it alongside, for example, relative strength index, and now go deeper with Connor's RSI. Search it in the search box, Connor's RSI. And this way, you get better and better, not only at TradingView, but at understanding the indicators that you may come across in your time on the platform, and in your time researching stocks as needed. So thanks so much. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel where we have over 400 educational videos. And be sure to read all of the articles in our help center as well. Please leave your feedback in the comments.